This was not made known to the people in other generations, as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The Gentiles were co-heirs, members of the same body, and partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I was made a servant of the gospel by the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. This grace was given to me, the least of all the saints, to proclaim to the Gentiles the incalculable riches of Christ, and to shed light for all about the administration of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things. Mm -hmm. This is so that God's multifaceted wisdom may now be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities in the heavens. Mm -hmm. This is according to his eternal purpose, accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, we have boldness and confident access through faith to him. So then, I ask you not to be discouraged over my afflictions on your behalf, for they are your glory. The word of the Lord. Terry asked me, are you going to talk about your sabbatical? told her, yes, and I'm going to keep talking about it until you take one. Mm-hmm. You all need to take a sabbatical. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it takes many forms, sabbatical. But I just want to thank um, the church, thank everyone that helped, uh, for Megan and Andy, for uh, down, holding down the fort, uh, especially for my wife, Lisa, who uh, allowed me to get out of Dodge and see my So thank you. You know, a sabbatical, uh, by the way, you know, it took 10 years before I got the sabbatical, so I don't feel too guilty. I'm hoping it won't be 10 years before I take my next one. In fact, I think you should take one every week. <laughs> okay. Maybe not sabbatical, maybe a different word. We'll get there in just a minute. But, you know, for me, it was a time to think and pray. Yeah, you ever just take time? Think and pray. I mean, and, 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 and do it in such a way that you're not thinking and, and praying about what you have to do tomorrow. You know, your, your busy life is not uh, on your mind. And usually my busy life you know, is on my mind. I'm thinking about, oh no, it's, it's Tuesday and Sunday's coming. I'm thinking about uh, having to, to preach or a meeting or something. Uh, maybe you would have to be thinking about an assignment or maybe a meal prep or how to fix the car. It's just so hard to stop thinking about what you have to think about all the time and to just think about big things like think about God or think about your raison d'etre, your purpose for living. And so that was, for, you know, I, there's many blessings, but for me, I think that was one of the blessings I just could just think and even as I'm thinking and praying and I'm asking God to direct my my thinking and uh, it, you know I think God took me some to, in some good places uh, I was also I found uh, some disturbing things that were on my in my head as well um, but you know I, you know you take you take every thought captive to the mind of Christ Amen and that's not that doesn't happen easy unless you're everybody. So we need to be thinking and thinking in a way that's productive. So uh, it was a good time to uh, to get away and think, and also to be with my mom. Many of you uh, know that my mom is in some decline in her health, in some decline, and and you know everybody's not sure what's going on. Lots of drama about it, and uh, I was able to hang with her for about ten days and really get the get lay the land and understand the situation. And um, that's also what's sometimes you know in our busy lives we just need to take some time with our with our friends with our people with our and, and just hear them listen to them as opposed to just you know just look at them and say oh I know I know your situation I got you all figured out right we have to spend some time and hear their hear their heart and again this all takes time uh, we need margin another way of putting this we need margin instead of doing cramming so many things into our lives which I tend to do, we need to, you know, maybe pull a few and just focus on one and leave maybe a half an hour to just ruminate and think about. Journal, 
How many of you journal? Anybody journal? I strongly recommend you get an elbow there. Um, I know that Haley's journaling at different times. It's a blessing, and uh, make sure you, you do that if you can. So we need margin to think about um, things in our lives, assess what we're doing, ask ourselves what we're doing. Um, I, I have 10 kids, and nine, I, I spent some quality time with nine of the 10. Even one from Hawaii, she, uh, she flew back to uh, San Francisco. We were in San Francisco for a few days and having a good quality time with, uh, with Annie. And so, yeah, also, just I want to, and this will come out more in, in the weeks and months ahead. I'm asking God, where is the church going? Where is, what is my role in the future for the church here? And uh, again, you know, stay tuned for, for that. But, uh, you know, I say all this not because I'm anything especially we're all in, these, in the same boat. We're all making decisions about the future, thinking about what the future holds. And uh, we want to take the steps. Um, my, my daughter Rachel is going to visit some colleges tomorrow, making some big steps there. And uh, you know, as she does that, uh, she's thinking about it, she's praying about it, and you know, maybe thinking about a new job, or maybe thinking about something uh, that uh, God has for you to do. What is He? What, how is He going to? How is He going to help you? Well, how is He going to teach you? How is He going to lead you? That happens if we think and pray and ask Him to lead us, and He will. He will draw near to, to, to me. God says, "I will draw near to you." Mm -hmm. The psalmist says, "Teach me Your paths, O Lord. Mm -hmm. Direct my ways." And, and He promises to do that. Mm -hmm. And so, as I was thinking, I was also thinking in the Scripture. I think my sometimes my thoughts go. Yeah, this, you come to the Lord and you realize that your thoughts are just all over the place. You're thinking about the Phillies. You're thinking about your job. You're thinking nasty thoughts about somebody. You're thinking, you know, I have, you know bitter thoughts about somebody. You're, whatever. You're just, you're upset. And there's nothing like getting you back to, to center than to just to be in the scriptures, whether it's the Psalms or the Proverbs mm -hmm. or, or the Epistles or the Gospels. <laughs> Um, and I tried to, to live in, in, the, in the scriptures as I was away. Again, this is not this isn't something you have to wait till sabbatical or Sabbath to do. This is something you can do anytime, and it's it's a great it's a great blessing. And so as I was there, I uh, I got into the scriptures and especially uh, well, especially the epistles, uh, even in Philippians, and uh, but I also spent some time in Ephesians. And if you know anything about Ephesians, of course, it's written by Paul as well. It's written to many churches in the, in the area of Ephesus, in that uh, vicinity. And it's about the church. About what the church is, its, it's purpose, its, uh, its role, its, 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 uh, its function, how, how it functions. But, uh, so it, it's, there's a lot in this, and we just covered a little bit today, as, as Lisa read. Thank you, uh, Lisa. But here, I hope, we, you know, as we look at this, we can encourage each other. Um, uh, and with some things here from this from this passage that we just we just we just looked at, and you know, I want you to know out the gate here that you are important. You, the church, you are. We are the most important organization in the whole world. Amen. We're more important than the U.S. Congress. <laughs> we're, we're we're more in, important than the. Uh, the board of Google, of Meta, of Apple. Amen. Uh, you know, we're more important than the United Nations. Amen. In fact, we are the United Nations. Yeah, I just thought of that. Uh, that's free. You did not come in my story. Yeah, we are the United Nations, if you will. So, hey, <laughs> but you know, how important are you? We're God died for you. <laughs> Is there any other... Any other way to think about it? Does that does that does that raise your 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 importance in, in your mind? Yeah. He died for you. Now he's living for you. We just heard about that. He's living for you in heaven, praying for you, and he lives in you to make his purposes in this world known. And that, and that might scare some of you. If you're honest, you know you might say, "I didn't sign up for this. I just want to come here and sort of you know hang with my friends or." You know, I, 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 I like people. Wait, 
I've got a job, I've got a task. Yes, we have a task, but just so you know, this task is not without his help. Amen? So, anyway, here, here in uh, chapter 3, we're picking up. Actually, a little context here. Uh, back in chapter 2, I, I had an opportunity to sort of talk a little bit about this. In, in, remember, how many of you went to Good Friday service there at uh, Church of the Redeemer? Pastor David Smith's church. Uh, that was a that was a great experience, wasn't it? To see everybody, all those churches. How many churches were there? Seven or eight? Four or five. Four or five, yeah. And uh, and then to hear those seven uh, last words of Christ, uh, they gave me an opportunity to just get up there and talk about our ministry. And I I went to this passage where you know here Paul is is describing in, in dramatic terms, in dramatic fashion, that he has been given the mystery. It's been withheld for centuries. The mystery of God. And what is the mystery of God? Anybody? Raise that. Anybody? Love. The Gentiles are fellow heirs? Is that what you mean? You're both right. You got the gospel and also that we Gentiles. Any Jews in the room? Any Nations in the room? Yeah, we're many nations. Or across the way, we're many nations. Yeah, all the nations have been brought into the chosen people of God. Amen. That was not, that was news back then, 2,000 years ago. I said, maybe we take it for granted now. But, but we shouldn't. We should repeat it. We should repeat it often. Uh, and we, it says here, he says, uh, chapter 2, if your, if your, hopefully your Bibles are open, he says that God... He is himself our peace, who has made us both one, and has broken down in the flesh the dividing wall of hostility. And then that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two. That's exciting. We are that one humanity. Church is one humanity, one new humanity. So, so let's 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 uh, back up here. Uh, as we as we back up, let's go forward now. And say and, and think about what does this what does this mean? And Paul says, what is what, what is what now that we know this, what are we going to do about it? That's what chapter three is in, in part about. Um, first of all, he talks about his role, his role, and then he talks about the church's role, and and they're they're simultaneous, they're 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 synonymous, they're they're equal. He says he says I have been given this grace, and and he goes on to say. Um, that, he, that has been now made known. He's now going to make known to the sons of men, you know, to, to a humanity in, in future generations. Um, this mystery, this Gentiles, our heirs, fellow heirs, ministers of the same body. And of this ministry, of uh, uh, this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to bring to life for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things. So that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the rulers and authorities of the church. He's, everybody, everybody, I want you to say this. Say, I am the church. Say, I'm the church. If you believe it, say it. I am the church. Ready? I am the church. The church. I am the body of Christ. I am the representation of Christ here on earth. Amen. Woo! There we go again. I'm laying it on you today. And here it is. We just read it, verse 10. It says, So that through the church, who's the church? Everybody? I am the church. Through the church, so that through the church, the manifold, and, and we can sort of uh, amplify Bible this. The many angles, hues, and dimensions of God's knowledge and its application in all things. The manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities, namely to all the world. We're doing it already! Reach back, don't stress yourself. Pat yourself on the back. We're doing it already in this church. You are part of it. Are we? Do you ever drive by, walk by our church? All those pretty banners? What do those pretty banners say? They say Ephesians chapter 2. All these 
nations with their crazy letters and their funny names. They're all hanging out together. That's the mystery of God revealed here. We're already doing it here. And they see us hanging together, working together. They're seeing it. Now, whether they're receiving it, oh, we can't. That's not our responsibility. That's up to God. But we are doing this. We are fulfilling this purpose. The manifold. And doesn't the, the world, the world talks about wanting unity. Oh, here it is. It's happening right here at 300 Slater Avenue, South Philly. Woo. Do you feel good about yourself again? Nobody's patting themselves on the back except me, but I, I feel good about myself. This is what we're doing. We're articulating it now. Not only that, we, with Paul, we are we're opening the treasure chest. It's my, my translation says the insearchable, and he says was the incalculable riches. Anybody want riches? Yes. Yeah. The riches that are ours in Christ. Yeah. Well, you know, they're, they're beyond measuring. Are you a billionaire? Yeah. No, you're a trillionaire. No, you're a bad zillionaire. Who knows what you are, right? We are so rich because of what Christ is for us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so we, we talk about it every Sunday. We, we roll out the treasure chest. We open them up for all to see. We get excited about it. Invite people to come in to experience it too. And so, you know, remember who you are. Remember who you are. You are the church. Now, let's talk about the church for a minute. Let's be honest with ourselves. Is the church perfect? No. Nope. I've been, I've been, I had a chance before we were, we were at about six hours of burn before our flight back to San Francisco. And, I'm sorry, back to Philly from San Francisco. And um, we were at a Starbucks and just hanging out. And uh, I started a conversation with this, uh, with this teacher at Fair, native of San Francisco. Everything and he said, Yeah, before you do it, because I, I, I try not to tell people I'm a pastor because it usually wrecks things. They, they <laughs> think they, they can't swear in front of me, they, 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 they think they have to be on the best behavior. So I try not to tell them. He said, Yeah, I know, I, I used to go to church, but there's just full of hypocrites. <laughs> to which I, of course, want to say the old joke oh, we always have room for one more. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we are a bunch of hypocrites, aren't we? We are always reforming, aren't we? We're always trying to get back, reform. You know what the word reform means? Think about it. Form again. Go back to the original, the original blueprint for who we are. So we're doing it right now. And to make sure that we're in line with that original form. But, you know, we're also a bunch of sinners. You know, we are a society of sinners, redeemed sinners. But, and, that, and, that, and then, let's be honest, not all of us are saved. I'm sure in this room, I would like to think all of you are saved. But there, the Bible says, Jesus says, there's, the church will consist of wheat and tares. What are tares? What are tares? The, 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 the wheat is the, is, the, is the saved ones. And so it, it, you got, we're going to coexist together. And so there's going to be some people that, that are, are not going to live the Christian life the way they should. And there are going to be some Christian and some, some, some people that are Christians and are doing exactly what you'd expect. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, we want to be careful to make sure that we're living the best way we can according to the plan that God has laid out in His, in his Word. And, and, and when we see corruption, when we see sin, we, we call it out. We call it out in love. We, we don't want to let it fester. And that's why if you become a member of our church, you, you, you agree to church discipline. What's church discipline? Church discipline happens actually every time you read the word, you discipline, right? Amen. Sometimes, and, and, and there's of course, the discipline of, the, of God who, in Hebrews chapter 12 tells us that he, he chases who he loves and we thank God for his discipline, although it's not pleasant at the time. Amen. But then there are times when we as, as believers and the sheep of the flock fall into sin. What are we going to do at that point? We're going to say, oh, we love you. No, we say, we love you. Stop it. Amen. Repent and come back. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm taking, I'm not, it's not my notes either. It's a little extra for you. But yeah, 
But yeah, the, the, but the point is, church, you are the most important thing. You've got a high calling. And when we when we sin, and we sin spectacularly, don't we? I mean, we've heard too many unfortunate stories lately about sin. A church's uh, leaders have fallen. And, and let's not dwell on that, okay? Let's, let's, let's confess it. Let's acknowledge it. Let's, let's, let's forgive each other. But then let's talk about the church for what it is. The church is God's, Jesus' bride. We cry. And one day we will be presented to God spotless and blemished without sin. But in the meantime, he's praying for us. He's advocating for us. He is living through us. So this thing called church is ugly sometimes. It's hard. It's not. It's not a fun ride. <laughs> you want to get off the ride, and and you know, we're working to make it the best it can be. But sometimes even God's blessing is 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 is, is slow to come, and, and we we cry out. We don't stop crying. No, we don't stop praying. We call out to God for His help. That's why we pray. And we're going to be praying more and more in this year as we Amen. think about what God has for us. Yeah. Amen. Sorry about that. So I'm excited today. I'm excited about who we are, what we're doing here at this church. Imperfectly, yes, but we serve a perfect Savior who, who shows us the truth of God and then asks us to turn around and show that manifold wisdom. To the world. It's Amen. many angles, it's hues, it's dimensions, it's knowledge of God Amen. and the applications to it. We are living, that is our living purpose here on Amen. earth. Thank you, Jesus. Before we, we pray, then we uh, move towards the Lord's Supper. Just, uh, just want us to, to think again about, <clears throat> about what we're doing here. Think, of, think again about our calling. And the calling is <laughs> too high, isn't it? This, who can do this? Who can be God's spokesman? Lord. Who can live a godly life be perfectly before men? Again, no one who can. But Paul seemed to think that there was the power to do that. And I want to stand up here as we, again, and we pray. And first, we're going to read these, this, this scripture. It's the very next part of the passage that. That Paul uh, writes here, and, we, we uh, and, and this is Paul again, being Paul. After realizing the greatness of God, the wonder, the majesty, he just breaks forth into all these prayers and and and, and great thoughts for us. And this is benediction type stuff. Uh, but let's just read this together. Let's all stand together and read this uh, again. This is Ephesians chapter three, picking up uh, at verse fourteen. Now for this reason I bow my knees before the Father, for whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have the strength to comprehend him with all the saints. What is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, through all generations forever and ever. Father, we thank you for this incredible privilege, this, 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 this place that you put us, this place called the church, this body of believers, this body of Christ who made us. Father, what a privilege to, to serve you, but yet we, we, we say, who am I? Uh, but by the grace of God do I, and we, we cry out to you for more grace as we would, we would fulfill this high calling that you've given us today. Thank you, Father, that Jesus is with us by his spirit guiding and directing us and that we can trust him father and that he is making he is doing a good work in this place we thank you father that he is uh, equipping us with every good thing to do his will working us working in us that which is pleasing in his sight 
through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.